Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. In today's world, people expect what they want and when they want it. Welcome to the world of instant gratification, where there seems to be a sense of immediacy and urgency in almost every action, purchase, or even communication. But have you ever noticed how it often feels like the worlds of like the real estate industry continue to move at a snail's pace compared with everything else in our digital world? And if anybody listening has moved home recently, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So according to Jeff Berman, general partner at Camber Creek, Mobile applications are changing how real estate is managed, accessed, experienced, bought and sold, ultimately giving individuals more control and visibility into their homes and offices. And the shift towards mobile offerings is accelerating the speed at which real estate transaction can happen. And the demands made by customers, property managers and owners and the connectivity generally within the industry. All this is more than enough to capture my attention. So I have arrived directly into your earballs today to pick you up and take you on a journey to New York City so we can go talk with Jeff Berman together. Fancy it? Okay, keep the noise down and I'll sneak you in now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do? Sure thing. So my name is Jeffrey Berman. I'm a general partner at Canberra Creek. We're the world's oldest real estate technology venture capital firm. We specialize in identifying, diligencing, investing, and growing startup companies whose product, software, or service create efficiencies that is add value within the real estate industry. And I think what makes us unique is that all of our partners, the, the general partnership of Camber Creek, have strong real estate backgrounds. We've been developers, we've been operators, we've been owners, we've been managers of every type of real estate that you can think of. And that gives us a valuable perspective as we go through our investment process. And one of the things I love about recording this Daily Tech podcast is learning about how technology is transforming industries that you don't associate with technology. And we are living in an age of instant gratification now. And and I think that's having a huge impact on so many different industries, including retail, hospitality and technology. But in the real estate industry, typically most things have been a very long process, such as buying a house, buying commercial spaces, to traveling to visit and living in different office spaces. But now, however, mobile-based offerings are making it possible for those processes to happen so much more efficiently and more quickly. So can you tell me a little bit more about how you, as, as someone that's in the heart of this industry, and especially, like you say, it's one of the oldest in the industry, how you're seeing technology impact in real estate and how are you seeing things like mobile applications changing how real estate is managed accessed experienced bought and sold and also what kind of benefits are they bringing and a big apology for me for throwing about 10 questions at you at one no 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 this is great and that's a really big question i think it will help people understand how vast the opportunity set is and how wide the impact of the digitization of real estate how big that will be by specific examples So you made reference to the long process of buying real estate. Even with all the technology tools that are available today, if you think about the discovery process, you're seeing title companies that are that are saying we are tech enabled services. You're seeing appraisal companies that are tech enabled services, even though all those technology companies exist today and have made the process somewhat easier. You're right. It's still a very long process. And the analog that I like to draw attention to is with the finance industry. So if you think about how people used to trade stock decades ago, they would call their broker, who would call the market maker, who would call the trading floor, and the trade would be initiated. And it took quite some time. Now, if you want to trade stock, you can trade it right on your phone. In fact, I could be trading stock right this minute and you would have no idea. And it would take barely any of my attention away from the conversation at hand. But over that multi-decade period, there was an evolution of online trading tools that were desktop first, 
that migrated and evolved into mobile trading tools. So now you can look at the analog in real estate. We like to look at big themes. What's happening in real estate? What's going to happen in real estate? How are people going to transact real estate? And this is just but one example. We believe that there will come a time where you and I will be able to trade real estate on our mobile devices instantaneously, adding massive liquidity to the market. But in order to be able to do that, all these wonderful tech tools need to be able to speak to one another in a common language, and there needs to be able there needs to be tools that evaluate and value the real estate, much like stocks are valued and evaluated by the market. So let's take one of our portfolio companies as an example. We invested in a company called Bowery, which is a tech-enabled appraisal firm. What they do is they have created a natural language algorithm that allows appraisers to do their job 75% faster, which then if you take that to its logical conclusion, allows lenders to make their loans quicker, which allows the transaction to close faster. But what they're also building is a repository of data that they are constantly gathering, a dynamic data set of every single appraisal that gets done, turning their company from a service company that is enabled by technology to a technology company that's going to enable the service of transacting real estate. So if you think about it, in order for us to be able to trade real estate back and forth, let's say a home or a piece of a home or a piece of a building, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to evaluate and value that property. What Bowery is building as part of that chain is going to become necessary in order to be able to do that. So mobile technology, mobile first technology, and indeed technology that's applied to every aspect of the, of the purchasing process is going to become ubiquitous. It's just a matter of time. Fantastic. And for people tuning in and just hearing about you guys for the first time, Camber Creek is a VC firm that focuses solely on investing in technologies for real estate. And prop tech is a big, big buzzword at the moment. So can you tell listeners a little bit more about the kind of technologies and startups that you're working with at the moment? Just help them visualize just how exciting that space is. Sure. So as you said, Camber Creek is a venture capital firm that invests in technologies for real estate. And there are a number of firms that have a similar focus now as the, as the industry has gotten larger. But if you peel back a layer, you can see what makes us different. We've chosen to manifest our own limited partner base, that is the, the folks and the organizations who've invested in us, to the mutual benefit of both of our, our investors and the companies we invest in. And so before I answer your question, it actually helps to understand our investment thesis, yeah. which I like to say can be boiled down to the two questions, capital T, capital Q. <laughs> the first is, can we use this product software service within our portfolio matrix? We define our portfolio matrix as the buildings that we and our LPs own or manage, which at this point is close to a billion square feet and hundreds of thousands of multifamily units. The tenants and residents who work and live in those buildings and the vendors who service all three. So if you think about that visually and you think about the millions of potential relationships that can be leveraged be over a billion square feet and hundreds of thousands of multifamily units, it's pretty massive the effect that we can have on our portfolio companies and our LPs themselves. And the second question, and this is the question that every venture capitalist worth their salt should be asking, is can this company win within its target market, can it scale? Will we make a venture a turn? So now, a lot of the companies that we're seeing in this prop tech space, as you said, it's, it's heating up. And you're seeing thousands of, of entrepreneurs jump in with both feet. So quite a few of those companies will check box number one. They'll, they'll answer the question number one in the affirmative. Yes, we'll be able to use the product software service. But most of them will not answer question number two, and fewer still will answer both of them. And that becomes the pot with which we invest in. And so it's those companies that can have an effect on our LP base, the buildings that, that we own, manage, operate, that our LPs own, manage, and operate, and the ability to create a venture return. That's the type of businesses that we focus on. 
And as someone that spends your time studying and examining tech companies that are making waves in real estate or even have the potential to, I'm conscious, fuck, they're keywords that are going to have startup founders all over the world listening to this podcast and their ears are suddenly going to be pricking up. What is it that you look for in a solution? So this is going to sound obvious, but <laughs> the solution needs to be something that will work for a large swath of the real estate community. And it, for us, at least, where we're Series A focused, it has to be market tested. But the first thing we look for actually isn't even the product or solution itself. It's the team. A strong team and leadership is a must. And really, you're going to hear that quite often from most VCs, but I can't overemphasize how important that is. We also have to like the team. This may may sound trite, but if things go well, we're going to be in a long-term relationship with these people. So starting out from a foundation of mutual respect and even collegiality will make it easier for the tougher moments that are sure to come up down the road. A strong team is going to be able to iterate and evolve their product as the market evolves. In fact, let me let me give you an example. We have a portfolio company called Nestio. It's led by a CEO, co-founder, Karen Mayo. She is dynamite, 100 over 100. Now, we get to know our portfolio companies early, sometimes years before we invest. And sometimes the, the reason we were getting involved in these companies in the early stage is that we find a spark in the founder or founder team, but their product doesn't necessarily fit within within the rubric that those two questions laid out. And that was the case with Nestio. Their, her team's original product was primarily a broker syndication tool, but Karen and I stayed in contact and I watched as she and her team built a tremendous business here in New York. And as their team and product evolved, got to a place where we could actually have an effect on their business and we invested. But all that started because Karen and I had a wonderful rapport. I understood the vision that she had. And once her product and company got to a place where, again, we could have an effect, that's when we went in. And I'm curious, how much have you seen real estate tech evolve, especially in New York since you started your career? (laughs) Quite a bit. (laughs) You know, when, when when you look at New York, our our building density, diversity of product type, economic engine and talent pool make New York City one of the world's most dynamic. And frankly, I would say at the moment, we're the center of the prop tech universe. And a lot of people will say to me, wow, prop tech just popped out of nowhere. But that's not accurate. Yeah. Canberra Creek has been active for a decade plus. But the difference is, the nuance is, when the real estate community in New York woke up to tech, which is really in the last 24 to 36 months, it was like throwing gasoline on the fire. And I think the real estate community started to realize that real estate itself, and we're using a a really general term for all types of real estate, but that the digitization of the asset base could yield real results. And that has had a marked effect on real estate tech as a as a as a as an asset class. And what is it that excites you about real estate and of course prop tech at the moment? Is there anything in particular that stands out for you? Well, is it a cop out <laughs> to say everything? Yeah. <laughs> because no, man, that's be, good. <laughs> well, because because I am. You know, as I mentioned earlier, technology is going to completely upend the way real estate is even thought of as a business. Real estate companies from construction to operations to management, they're going to begin bearing more resemblance to technology companies than the real estate concerns of old. And so when you think about when you think about construction and and the drone technology that's 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 being developed in order to be able to make sure that safety on site is is at its at its highest level, that fealty to the original plans is being kept to. That's really exciting. And then you look at at the amenitization of office and, and multifamily space. It's it's just exciting times. So do you see any other big disruptions on the horizon? I mean, immediately for me on the outside looking in, blockchain has got a little bit of potential, but it's a bit too early to predict. But do you see the, the industry being disrupted further? Absolutely. I, you know, I don't know that I would agree that blockchain is going to be a disruptor rather than something that's going to manifest positive change for the industry as far as transparency. 
and as we were as we were discussing earlier, the way that people transact real estate is going to change. Blockchain, because it's that underlying ledger of truth, might be the rails with which that system changes. But if you think about disruptions itself, quite a number of our investors are trying to think through how the advent of autonomous vehicles is going to change the way properties, suburbs, cities, how all of that is developed. Because when we think about getting into an, an automobile and driving from one place to another, and we have to think about parking, we have to think about how much it's going to cost us, and we have to think about the environment. Autonomous vehicles, when that decision is taken away from us or, or, or automated, that, that can have an awesome effect. Well, you know, it's amazing. If you think about do you, what kind of phone do you have? Do you have an iPhone or do you have an Android? Oh, man. Me, me answering that question, I could, I'm opening myself up to ridicule from whichever ever side of the fence. Well, then you but know what? I'm, I'm an I'm iPhone guy. I'll say answer it. <laughs> but if you think about the tools that you have at your disposal yeah. through either your iPhone or your Android phone, and you think about what your life looked like before that, that was only 10 years ago or 11 years ago. And you think about how that is drastically changed your productivity and the way you spend your time, autonomous vehicles can have that effect on, on the way we live our lives. Just, just think about productivity from, from, from a commuter's perspective of not having to pay attention to the road in the way that we have to pay attention to the road now. We could have meetings on the road. We could, the possibilities are endless. And especially the way from a development perspective, like if you look at a city like London, which is pretty constrained from a development perspective, and this idea that, well, I can live miles out, tens of miles out, maybe even hundreds of miles out, because the way I'm going to commute, the way I'm going to get goods and services, the way I'm going to interact with the landscape around me might totally change and and be automated. That's, that's it's heady stuff. So 10 years from now, I think we're going to have a, a different but we're going to be able to look back and say, okay, well, how has this looked so far, and where are we, where are we going from here? Well, we could start the day and end the day on inbox zero. Can you imagine that world? <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> so, what's next for Camber Creek? Is there anything else you can share with us today? Well, I can, I can tell you that we just brought on a new partner, Mitchell Shear. Mitchell has an amazing background. He's the former president of Bornado Charles E. Smith, which is the Washington, D.C. Division of Bornado Realty Trust, uh, a small $20 billion real estate investment trust. And Mitchell spent 15 years directing the strategy, performance, and growth of Bornado's 20 million plus square foot portfolio. And so that's really exciting for us because it, it just adds to the breadth and the heft of, of our partnership. Beyond that, we're going to keep executing on our strategy. What a huge thank you for taking the time to join me today. But before I let you go, could I ask that you remind everyone listening of where they can find you guys online? And if we do have any startup founders in the prop tech space, what's the best way for them to reach out and contact your team if they, they do have any additional questions? Absolutely. So you can visit our website at camberkreek.com. That's C-A-M-B-E-R-C-R-E-E-K.com. And you can find all the partners on LinkedIn or easily reachable. Excellent. Well, I'll add all those links to the blog post that will accompany this episode just so people can find out more information nice and easily without having to scribble everything down. But more than anything, just a big thank you for taking the time to come and speak with me today. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Looking forward to the next time we, we can chat. Thanks so much for Jeff for coming on the show today and discussing the advancements of technology, specifically mobile based offerings in real estate. And also how they've changed and impact the industry and how things work now. Not to mention examining tech companies that are making real waves in real estate or have the potential to in the near future. And of course, how New York City is becoming a real hive of activity in the prop tech scene too. And if we do have any prop tech startup founders listening, whether you're in New York City or anywhere in the world, I want you to email me now. Let me get you on this show and let's explore this topic further together. So please email me directly, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk or you can get me on Twitter at Neil C. Hughes.
So I think we've covered a lot of ground in prop tech today. Tomorrow we'll explore a completely different industry and and the role technology is playing in transforming it. So I'll see you bright and early tomorrow. A big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.